Hi guys, I'm Irfan. Happy to be here today to talk to you about how I use AI in my day to day. Um, quick introduction, I work at uh, MAS Twinery. I work in a team called FutureWorks, where we basically look at uh, what the future would be like, what future business models and technology would look like, and how we build towards it. I've always believed in the intersection of, of human truth, technology, um, and, and kind of business capability, right? Um, because behind any problem and opportunity, there would always be a human insight, a human desire, a human need. I think building into that uh, has always been something that interested me. It's something I've practiced now for the last, last 15 years. So if someone asks me, what do you really do? My, my answer has always been, I work in human-centric design. And I, and I bridge technology and strategy to human-centric design. My work has taken me across multiple categories. Um, I started in advertising, I worked in telco, I worked in manufacturing, and now I'm working back in manufacturing, wearable tech and, and medical devices. And, and across all of this, uh, one constant remains is that um, you need to be clear about what you're building, who you're building it for, what that real um, need is, and technology is then only the enabler. And I think um, what I see from a lot of um, examples out there, we tend to put the cart before the horse, uh, we fall in love with the technology and then figure out what it's gonna do for us. Um, and my theory or my notion has always been around, first be clear on what you want to achieve and then be clear on how technology is gonna unlock it uh, for you. Uh, so really working at the intersection of human, human insight, technology, and business capability has been that sweet spot uh, for me. So in, in terms of AI, I think we all know it's, it's nothing new. It's just come into prominence a lot more, more today. And we speak a lot about digitization, digital transformation, AI. Um, and again, it's been a gradual journey. Uh, we've seen across our businesses, uh, a lot of processors getting digitized, a lot of systems coming in, but essentially them starting to affect people, systems, and create bigger outcomes is where the transformation piece comes in. And I think one of the biggest enablers of that transformation is, is AI. Uh, for me personally, in my day-to-day, -day, um, I use a lot of uh, ChatGPT um, to help me do what I do. It's, make, it's made my research faster. It's helped me analyze things faster. It's taken away the mundane tasks. It has not dumbed me or dulled me. It has only made me smarter faster and more efficient. Uh, I also use Notion uh, considerably. It runs my day. Uh, it's connected to my GPT. It runs my day. It uh, manages my task list, my to-do list, my notes. It syncs things up, summarizes notes for me. So I think between GPT and Notion, uh, almost my, my life uh, has a really, really capable assistant uh, and a good partner working with me. So I think most people believe that um, AI is, is a threat uh, and I think that's, uh, that's an outdated notion. Um, AI really is about enabling what we do. Um, if you take any job, it's the tasks within those jobs that might get, um, let's say, redundant. But learning how to unlock AI and use AI, so I, don't, I really don't see AI replacing expertise. It actually accelerates expertise. Uh, and it helps us create value a lot faster. For an example, we are working on uh, a video platform uh, at one of the businesses that I co-founded, and there we really want to understand taste communities. Um, so how do we know what people like to watch, what genres, from what um, studios, with what actors, uh, how would that affect watch time, open rate of OTT app. And, and we bought in a lot of machine learning and eventually AI recommendation engines there. So we looked at what can we learn from sites like IMDB, YouTube, to really start looking at local taste preferences and build that into a recommendation engine. So if you really look at it, it made us sharper, faster, more insight driven. And before that, when we were looking at open rates and utilization rates of this app, we were really targeting consumers based on who traditional demographics of age and location. Whereas the AI machine learning was telling us that a better targeting metric was probably the brand of the phone, the model of the phone, and the screen size of the phone. It completely changed the dynamic of, of what we were doing. So if you really look at it, it's not here to replace us. It's really here to, to enhance us. So while it helps us to convert test, 
deep, develop and deploy ideas faster. There's also a downside to it. Um, we need to be mindful of the data that we use. Uh, we need to be mindful of the ethical concerns around the data that we use uh, and the privacy aspect around it. And I also do think there's an over-reliance of, of AI. Of late, I'm seeing, I could spot a deck done on Gamma, for example. It's completely taken away critical thinking. Um, it's some basic prompts and it's throwing out um, a good-looking PowerPoint. But a good-looking PowerPoint doesn't necessarily mean it's a good PowerPoint. Right? So we're using AI, uh, we're getting there faster, but we're not sometimes thinking about the quality of the work, the accuracy of the work, or the impact of the work. So I think we need to be mindful of why we have AI to assist us, help us do what we do better. It should also not make us lazy. So it's really also then going to boil, still boil down to the homework that you do, the analysis that you do, how you convert that homework and analysis into sharp prompts, how you still question the AI in the form of prompts as well as validating and cross-checking, and then really knowing what, what you're looking for. So those would be some of the pitfalls that we have to watch out for, because AI at the end of the day, it's still artificial intelligence. It does not replace real intelligence.